After being nominated for five awards at the 60th annual Grammys, SZA expressed her gratitude in a heartfelt Instagram post. The lengthy caption included the singer confessing, I begged for writers on this project because I thought no one would like me the way I was. I remember crying because I didn't have any hits or a quantifiable sound. I remember feeling like, damn, maybe I suck. Maybe I should try something else. Most people would be surprised by SZA's honesty as her debut album Control was met with universal critical acclaim. And although SZA went home empty-handed at the 2018 Grammys, what some would consider one of the biggest snubs of recent years, the impact of Control transcends any awards ceremony. In fact, Time Magazine listed the album as the best of 2017. In 2020, Rolling Stone included Control in its updated 500 Greatest Albums of All Time list. Anyone familiar with the LP understands why this is, as SZA not only wrestles with vulnerability in profound ways, but she does so on a sonic palette all of her own. The record is responsible for cementing SZA as a bona fide star, so much so that she's earned the right to release music whenever she sees fit. In this video, we will explore the beauty and brilliance of Control. We will highlight the process behind its formation, from the innovative production to its unadulterated songwriting. Most importantly, it will be truly obvious why Control is already heralded as a modern classic. Sound is arguably the most integral element when discussing any exceptional album. An artist's sonic choices can easily make or break a project. In the case of most modern pop and R&B albums, artists recruit dozens of producers to help convey their ideas. Although in rare cases, some singers manage to pull off a cohesive or eclectic project, many albums suffer from sounding disjointed or nondescript. Throughout the process of control, SZA primarily worked alongside producers Scum, Carter Lang, Thank God for Cody, and Terrence Henderson. Instead of seeking industry veterans or hit producers, SZA entrusted the localized TDE talent to craft a homegrown and distinctive sound. For example, the three most recognizable songs off Control, Love Galore, The Weeknd, and Broken Clocks, were arranged by Thank God for Cody, Lang, and Henderson. Together, this relatively small group of producers was able to curate an album that's genre-bending and in many ways difficult to categorize. SZA revealed that she also researched hit records between the 1940s and 1980s for musical inspiration during the recording stages. Meanwhile, the aforementioned beatmakers would compete to see who could create the best songs for the album. While it's typical to label control as R&B, it's limiting to say so unequivocally. The music most definitely has roots in R&B sonics and hip-hop grooves, however, it also eludes traditional urban music by incorporating pop, indie rock, and electronic music elements. Whether it's an acoustic guitar number or a song with disco references, listeners experience versatility in a close-knit way. What's most impressive about the production on the LP is its ability to incorporate trap influences, notably the fluttering hi-hats and ubiquitous 808s, without sounding generic. The aggressive drums, whirling synths, and overall analog approach on control are what some would consider alternative or future R&B. At the same time, there are remnants of nostalgia laced throughout the record though SZA is careful not to indulge in them too heavily. In terms of vocals, SZA abandoned the reverb-heavy style of her earlier work. She was inspired to strip the effects down after playing several songs for legendary producer Rick Rubin, who told her, the more you take away from a piece, the more room you create for everything else to be beautiful and grow. This minimalism was also applied to the collaborations on the album, as there are only four features, which include Travis Scott, Kendrick Lamar, James Fauntleroy, and Isaiah Rashad. Compared to the countless arbitrary guest appearances on modern albums, SZA ensured each addition to the record was intentional and fitting. Through this combination of sensibility and experimentation, SZA would be set apart from many of her contemporaries. Moreover, it's why Control is one of the most memorable debut albums of late.
Unfortunately, an album requires more than an extraordinary sound to be deemed groundbreaking. For Control, the indisputable best feature of the record is its songwriting. Unlike the metaphorical work on Z and C is a run, listeners were introduced to a more personal and bold side of the songstress. The nearly hour-long LP explores themes including love, desire, self-worth, guilt, adulthood, and much more. Nevertheless, the magic of SZA's songwriting is its freestyle-like and stream-of-consciousness approach. The singer constantly challenges our notions of the standard rhyming schemes we have grown to know and love. For instance, on the opening track Supermodel, SZA shamelessly rants about her frustrations about a past lover with an unconventional cadence. The infamous confession of secretly banging this ex's homeboy is easily one of the most unforgettable lines on the album. In a 2017 interview, SZA stated, I freestyle everything, all the way down, and I listen back and think, what's shitty? And if something's too shitty and I can't put my finger on it, and I think, wow, this sucks to me, then I get way frustrated, and I usually scrap the song. It's through this uninhibited nature that SZA's brilliance is most pronounced. It's also why her brutally honest lyrics resonate so deeply with listeners. Furthermore, SZA inadvertently takes on a feminist stance in many of the songs. She does so by defying female stereotypes or failing to adhere to common expectations of women. On the first official single, Drew Barrymore, SZA admits, the song Normal Girl more pointedly harps on SZA's desire to live by traditional gender ideals as she sings Yet, the most definitive cut on control challenging femininity is the now platinum hit The Weeknd. Most of the reason behind its success is the controversial and counterintuitive message. Shortly after its release, it was dubbed the Side Chick Anthem. However, SZA takes authority on the song by claiming power in the relationship dynamic. More importantly, she gives voice to a perspective that is often disgraced and rarely covered in popular music. A common misconception about SZA's songwriting is its fixation on failed romance. Judging by the most commercially successful songs on Control, this may appear to be true, though a closer look at the album uncovers numerous subject matters. Much of the music on Control has an existential outlook on not only love, but life in general. On Prom, SZA grapples with the inevitability of growing up and maturing. She confronts her feelings surrounding achievement and success when she expresses, These emotions are even more fleshed out on the quarter-life crisis anthem, 20-something. As a millennial herself, SZA speaks to a generation struggling with self-worth and navigating adulthood. Some of the most poignant lines on control come from the song, such as, How could it be 20-something, all alone still, not a thing get my name, ain't got nothing, running from love, all in no fear. These are just a few examples of SZA diversifying the substance on control. She also faces her insecurities on Garden Say It Like That, reminisces about working at a strip club on Broken Clocks, touches on hopefulness and self-love on Pretty Little Birds, and highlights the importance beyond sex in a relationship on Doves in the Wind. Lastly, the most praiseworthy aspect of SZA's songwriting is that she does it all on her own. Apart from a single co-writer on Drew Barrymore and the guest verses on the album, every song is written entirely by Solana Rowe, as her name appears on the credits. This fact is even more astonishing when one realizes how uncommon it is in popular music. It may be the exact reason as to why the album is so outstanding after all. As mentioned earlier, 
Sizzle was deeply subconscious about the release of control because she felt it bore no hits. What she failed to recognize is that the genius of the album exists in spite of this very presumption. While many of her peers deliberately sought to release commercial music, SZA refrained from doing so. In turn, many of the formula-driven R&B albums of the past decade have since been forgotten. And despite not having any top 20 hits on the Billboard Hot 100, Control has maintained longevity that has resulted in every released single reaching at least platinum status. In other words, the album stuck with us. Just like artists such as The Weeknd and Frank Ocean, SZA was able to bend the rules of popular music in her favor. Rather than compromising her artistry for potential hits, the public uplifted her authenticity to mainstream status. When discussing the making of The Weeknd, SZA stated, I cared so little about that song. I made that song in two seconds. That was like a throwaway. It's this unfazed nature at music making that has contributed to the organic success of the LP. Perhaps SZA saw the final form of control as a commercial gamble. Maybe the idea of it failing weighed so heavy on her that she became overly critical of herself. Ultimately, these are sometimes the kinds of risks that are required for an artist to see their utmost potential. They are the types of leaps that make the difference between good music and great music. Control is an album about, well, just that. It's about SZA's constant battle with taking agency over her life. When speaking on the concept, SZA said, I've lacked control my whole life, and I think I've craved it my whole life. Listeners are well aware of this constant theme, as the record is beautifully woven together with voice notes from her mother and grandma. The wise words from SZA's mom reveal that Control is not merely an album full of random musings, nor is the record supplemented with inconsistent filler. The stories captured on Control, much like the Sonics, are ones that will remain relevant for decades to come. They are narratives that almost anyone can relate to in some way, shape, or form. Many people may argue that it's much too soon to proclaim Control a classic, they might insist that time can only reveal such a statement of grandeur. However, every once in a while comes an album that is an exception to this rule. These LPs penetrate the music world in ways that can't be ignored. Audiences and fellow musicians take note, and the culture is either slightly or radically shifted by their influence. When music enthusiasts look back at the 2010s decade, or rather the early 21st century, Control will be among various projects that will be considered culturally, historically, and sonically significant. Not too bad for an album SZA was once mortified by, now is it? Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. What are your thoughts about the legacy of Control? Do you agree or disagree with the sentiments provided? Lastly, what are your favorite aspects of SZA's debut album and why?